Good morning, folks. Today we've got news on our star in the solar system, deep space, and right here on Earth. Let's get started, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We're taking a look at the last 24 hours on our star. Very calm in the Earth-facing latitudes and longitudes. We have some dark patches, coronal holes, and then a tipped-over C-shaped rope that's a plasma filament turning through center disk today. Solar flaring is slightly on a rise upward, and that's due to, top left, the birth of some new sunspots. These were actually born as the plasma filament action took place, the ones we saw in the yellow 171 angstrom view to start the show. The solar wind is still calming at Earth. We are definitely outside of the coronal hole stream at this point, but we do have more coming. These coronal holes are peppered around center disk, and so a re-intensification of the stream should be expected. We do have a little sun diving comet coming up there. Kind of difficult to see, but we'll be zooming in. What we'll note until we get a better look tomorrow is this doesn't appear to be in Kreutz position. Gorgeous footage of the Reventador volcano eruption that took place in Ecuador earlier this month. It took a few weeks for the video makers to get back to civilization. The November Global Climate Report is out, and once again we have the real data versus what everybody else in the world sees. The one with all of the blue, that's the real data, showing a good mix of too hot and too cold, but it all disappears on the chart that's going out to the mainstream media and into the minds of everyone in the world. Make sure you know better. Up next, we're at Chandra, coming into the Perseus-Pisces cluster and the cosmic web, showing up in a bit of light here. They, of course, believe that to be dark matter, even though they can't find it. Interestingly, when you look at it in not only optical and radio, but x-ray as well, the emission line at 3.5 keV appears to be confirmed. There is a lot of speculation about exactly what that means, but for those of you deep into the dark matter or lack thereof stories, this is an interesting one. And speaking of interesting, coming back into the solar system here, there is a signature of our star on Uranus, except it appears to be the modulation of galactic cosmic rays affecting clouds and reflectivity. That is, in fact, the story in this paper as well, Svensmark's latest. I know we have a lot of his fans watching the show. Pretty good mechanistic action and description of how cosmic rays can induce cloud condensation. Folks, a couple of days ago in the news, I mentioned a deep earthquake anomaly happening about 300 kilometers or so beneath our feet. And here's the story. We have now gotten the community to check out exactly how rare this event is. No deep earthquakes, deeper than 300 kilometers, for seven days here in the middle of the month. Now granted, that is not something that has never happened before, but it certainly didn't happen in the previous months of 2017, 2016, 2015, 2014, 2013. You can see we did have a four day in a row there, and back in 2012 it appears we did have this same type of long absence. Now you get back too far, the data reliability doesn't appear so great, but it does appear there could be a five to seven year, maybe a bit longer, separating the upticks in breaks from these events. Another interesting way to look at it is how many of those deep focus earthquakes were recorded each year, looking like coming out of solar maximum and into solar minimum, like back then and now, gives us the uptick. So the final word is that while it is anomalous, it is not ultra rare or something that's never happened before. This is why it's great to get the community involved. Folks, we've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.